so here's the deal. We find ourselves at the Bellagio early-ish on a Sunday. It's like 11 o'clock. I know I have to stream at home tonight for WPT Global at 6.15. Is this enough time for a vlog? Hmm. I might have four hours in me. So the question is, is four hours enough? Four, four and a half if I'm pushing it? Let's see what we can do. So, time is of the essence here, both while filming this vlog and actually while doing the voiceover for this vlog. Arriving at the Bellagio, there are two 510 games running, a main game and a must move game. If you're unfamiliar with the concept, it works like this. New players are seated in the must move game first. As a player leads the main game, their seat is filled by a player from the must move game. First in, first out. Typically, of the two games, it's the must move that's the better. The main game is normally filled with grizzled pros or those at least skilled enough to hang around for a while. While the must move tends to be more spastic, more action, and more touristy. Maximizing win rate at the must move is generally a good idea. In this early hand, the hijack opens to $30 and we find a 3-bet from the button to $100 with the queen jack suited, which elicits a quick hijack fold. Our plan at this table is to take the more aggressive action in all these sort of iffy spots. Well, until I sense any sort of adjustment by the field. In this next hand, we take playing a lot of hands a bit too far. The hijack opens to $50, which is a very large open for this game. Us finding the call on the button with king four of hearts is tragic. This isn't a thing at all. Ever. I have played with the hijack before and I do know that he is extremely fit or fold. But even with that knowledge, king four hearts should just be a fold. Even from the button. Heads up, we see a flop of nine, five, eight, all hearts, and now I'm starting to rethink everything I just said about king four hearts being a fold. Maybe being results oriented is the way to go. I flopped effectively the second nuts. I know... I know it's really the third nuts, but no one is opening 5x with 7 6 of hearts. Let's be real. The hijack checks, and we bet one third pot, and he folds very quickly. The good start continues. Action is folded to me on the button, and I open to $30 with 5 4 of hearts. Both the small and big blind call, and we see a flop three ways. Although it may not come into play this hand, I want to pause here to introduce the guy on my direct left. His presence and our history may come into play this session. The man on my direct left is named Eli. Years ago, seems like a lifetime at this point, back when I used to play on live streams a lot, he and I played on the Stones live stream together. Here he is on my right, with Chris Moneymaker on my left, playing 5 5 10, 20 at Stones, which at the time was the biggest game I'd ever played in by far. He seems like a great guy. He'll definitely get in there and be mixing it up. And he likes to call. A lot. He does have his moments of randomness though, and I fully expect him to be in a lot of hands with a lot of peculiar holdings. Ace of hearts, five of clubs, three of diamonds. When both blinds check, we have a pretty easy c-bet here. We make it $30 and both fold. The next hand is an example of what having Eli on your left is like. Open 6-5 of spades to $30 and he calls on the button. Fair enough. I flop a pair on 6 of clubs, 7 of hearts, queen of diamonds and check. He checks back. Ace of diamonds. Two more checks. Nine of hearts. Two more checks. I table my hand and he shows jack 5 of diamonds. So, a really, really wide call preflop, and no attempt to win the pot post. When you see things like this, you'll want to make a mental note of it. It often comes in use later in your session.
Okay, so all that being said about Eli, our history, both past and recent, is bouncing around in my head, and then this hand happens. He opens under the gun to $30, and under the gun one calls. The cutoff calls, and I look down at 6-5 offsuit in the big blind and decide to come along as well, because... Odds. Four ways we see this flop. Deuce of hearts, six of spades, six of clubs, and I'm first to act. Well, damn. Good turn of events for me. No real pressing reason to lead, and so I check. Eli checks, and under the gun one player bets $60. The cutoff calls the $60, and now it's my turn again. I choose not to check raise with two players behind me, so I call. Our under the gun friend doesn't share the sentiment and raises to $350. The under the gun one player also believes more money should be in this pot and he raises the check raise, which is super strong, but he does it anyway. He just moves all in for around $1,000. The cutoff quickly folds and now action is on me. I cover both players by a few hundred bucks and although I have trips, it's not like I have this hand on lock. In fact, there's a non-zero chance that I'm dead to a five. But what am I going to do? Fold? No. If I'm getting coolered, I'll take my cooler like a man. Come on. I check raise the raise of the check raiser and move all in. Eli doesn't take any time at all and calls my all-in shove re-raise of the raise of the check raiser for less. Ugh, ugh, man, that's hard to say. The turn brings a nine of clubs, so no help to me. And the river nine of diamonds, it isn't any help either. I table bottom full house. The under the gun one player mucks. And the under the gun player shows pocket fives. Yes, pocket fives. I scoop. Must moves, man. Always the way. Still in the midst of gathering all my chips, I fold the very next hand, Queen Jack Offsuit, from the small blind facing a $30 open. Following that, there is a hijack open to $30, and I look down at pocket kings from the button. Well, not folding this, even if my chips aren't situated yet. We three bet to $100, and to our surprise, get four bet to $330, which leaves our villain with about $850 behind. In this spot, we want to rush to get the money in before the ace comes and kills the action. We move in and the hijack just snap folds. A couple of hands later, we win a small pot with a7 offsuit and then we are immediately tapped on the shoulder to move to the main game. Damn it. I don't want to move. <laughs> No, go ahead. I'm going to call her. So we are going to do an abbreviated mid-session update because this is an abbreviated session. Um, I just moved from the must-move game to the main game. The must-move game went extremely well, as typically must-moves do. Um, I a little more than tripled up with 6-5 offsuit on like a 6-6 six, six deuce board. Um, then I turned around and won another little hand. Then I turned around and picked up pocket kings and won that hand. Basically, I just didn't lose any meaningful hand at the must move. But now we're on the main game. I just sat down. I haven't even played a hand yet. Came out here, talked to you fine people. Now we're gonna go back in there, give it a couple more hours, and then I gotta get out of here. I got things to do today. I have a stream to do in a few hours. I don't have all day to spend here, although I wish I did. All right, wish me luck. Like expected, the main game is full of professionals and recognizable faces. I don't see this table as being as lucrative as the last one, but we're here to battle. 
After coloring up my chips and watching numerous three and four bet pre-flop battles for a couple orbits, this next hand transpires. An under the gun open followed by an under the gun one $30 call. We slide in the mix with queen jack offsuit and see the flop three ways. Eight, nine, 10, rainbow. Well, I can't say that we aren't running good. Flopping the nuts is always welcome. We check, and unfortunately, the flop gets checked through. The turn jack is... Mm, not my favorite card in the deck. Now with a one-liner to a straight, it will be much harder to extract money here without a chop, and it's not impossible that we just went from having the nuts to drawing dead in a single street. Regardless, we lead for $40, and the opener calls. The River 7 of Spades puts a straight on board, and I lead for $200, which puts me in a precarious situation. The goal here is to get called by hand that thinks we are both playing the board. It's rare that the player will raise here without holding a queen unless they have king-queen. All this extra thinking, however, is for naught, as our villain, after a short tank, folds. After a few orbits of nothingness at this main game, our old Stones Gambling Hall compadre joins our table, again, to our direct left. Here we open the action at $30 with pocket deuces, and he calls. Heads up, we see Jack of Spades, Six of Clubs, Six of Hearts, and I just continue for $20. He calls. His call could be a lot of things. It doesn't necessarily mean we are losing. The Eight of Spades falling on the turn is not the deuce I was hoping for, and I check. He checks behind. The river brings the seven of clubs, and again, not the deuce I was hoping for, and I check again. Now, he bets $110, and this, well, this doesn't smell right at all. Oh, you have no no idea how bad I want to call you. Like you have no you have no idea how bad I want to call. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, deuces, you can't call. I can I can raise. What do you mean? I can do all the things. I have all the options right now. I expose my hand by turning my deuces face up and debate on calling him anyway. After a brief discussion about it aloud, I just fold. And he shows me King Five of Spades for the bluff. Let me show you him, you know. <laughs> I'll show you man. Oh. Well played, sir. Nice, nice, nice. That dude just punked you on your own vlog in front of all your little followers and subscribers. Well played, sir. <laughs> Couldn't be me. About 30 minutes after the tragic demise of Pocket Deuces, we play this next one. There's an under the gun limp and I find the raise on the button to $40 with ace king offsuit. Our friend that's never seen two cards preflop that he doesn't like comes along from the small blind and the big blind gets in the mix as well. Not wanting to look like a quitter, the under the gun limper tags along. Four ways we see a flop of ace three four with two clubs. The small blind, the big blind and the under the gun player all check to me and we want to bet this flop. However, we can't go crazy on low boards like this. We settle on $60 and slide that into the middle. Our small blind friend comes along and the big blind and under the gun player find the exit. The turn ace of diamonds is not only a great card for our hand, but it also may give the impression that we weren't betting an ace on the flop. The small blind checks again. We aren't checking back here, especially with 19 different draws on this board. We bet $150, and although he thinks about it for a while, the small blind calls again. The river brings the king of diamonds, and this couldn't have been scripted better, as now we have the nuts against a player that rarely believes us and likes to call. A lot. When he checks, we go for the home run. We drop six black chips into the middle. He caps his cards and leans back in his chair to think. It takes him a while... 
but eventually he leans forward and slides his cards into the muck. A few seconds later, the big blind chimes in and guesses that I had ace king. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? No. No, I didn't have ace king. No, huh? yeah, ace king. No. Ace king. No. Two hands later, we look down at pocket tens from the hijack, facing another early position limp. Again, we raise to 40, and again, both players to my direct left call and the early position limper calls. Deja vu. This time, we don't flop as well as we did in the ace king offhand. We flop better. Ten of hearts, deuce of spades, nine of clubs. The original limper checks, and we bet $60. The cutoff folds, but both the button and the early position limper come along. Not many cards blanker than that four of diamonds on the turn. The early position player checks again, and we go with about a two-thirds pot size bet here, $200, and both remaining players fold. Like I said from the outset, I knew this would be a session on the shorter side. I wasn't at the main game for too long before it was time to rack up and head out. So here we are leaving the Bellagio. I'm going to continue to not talk about wins and losses here in public, but if you've been paying attention to this short vlog, you can probably figure it out. No idea where my car is. I will tell you how I did when, um, I get to the next destination. So we're here, not at the Bellagio. We are, um, at Lily's place, and hopefully there are no bad guys and robbers here, so I can happily tell you I was in the Bellagio uh, 510 game for 1500 I cashed out at 4271 in a very short session. Um, four, four and a half hours. Uh, hopefully you saw the almost triple up with 6-5 offsuit. Then I picked the pocket kings. I made top set with pocket tens. Um... I flopped another set of threes. Like things were just going right. And when things are going right, you're gonna win big. When things go wrong, you lose big. So I am happy that I had a good session. I will uh, work on not letting it go to my head. It doesn't mean I'm the best player in the world. I just had a good session. I'm keeping this wrap up quick because it is Sunday afternoon. I have a billion things to do before jumping on uh, a live stream here on this channel for WPT Global's um, win world championships so that's it that's it that's the entire wrap up we're gonna get out of here so if you like this uh vlog then like the vlog leave me a comment subscribe do all the things and i will catch you next time bye another radically different start to uh today's vlog i know what you guys are saying we want poker hands we want hands we want hands today we're going to start at the soul for why academy studios i'm jumping on the soul for why only friends podcast So after all of that, after all of that running to and fro, after playing a session at the Bellagio, after sitting here at the win, I think, and I haven't calculated this exactly, but I think I am up 
maybe 36 or 37 dollars at this point <laughs> i'm so ridiculous you stuck around through this whole video the whole thing just to see my mistakes okay i'll show you whatever so that's it that's it. That's the entire wrap up. We're going to get out of here. So if you like this uh, blog, then like the blog, leave me a comment, subscribe, do all the things, and I will catch you next time. Bye. It's Sunday, who knows what day, October. Um, hopefully winning a uh, ticket to... And uh, then I got to get out of here. I got to get home. I got things to do. It's Sunday and I have to stream tonight. So this is going to lean hit and runny, but I got things to do. Mornings are the same. I don't want to play this game. Let me go back to sleep.